Hey guys, this is Ben Morrow. I'm a senior console designer in the game and film industry. In this portion of the tutorial, we're going to be going over the creation of the chimpanzee bust, taking that accurate skull study we did in the last portion of the tutorial, and then uh, using that as a kind of a framework and a foundation to build a really accurate uh, chimpanzee study over top. Um, I'm just going to get in there and we're going to start sculpting the actual uh, chimpanzee on top of this skull. Uh, right now I'm just uh, inserted as a sphere into the scene uh, as a new sub-tool and made it a dynamesh. Uh, now I'm just kind of um, using the snake hook to push it around and make it fit. Also going to mask out an area for the ears, trying to match it up, uh, looking at the reference. It sits quite far back on the head, so I'm just trying to figure out where exactly the best place to put that in there is going to be. Uh, that's, a, that's one thing I noticed a lot of my past students struggling with is just getting that volume on the lips. They would just cut things in but not really pay attention to how thick or thin the lips are and how they touch together and what sort of form or shape that makes. Um, the, the benefit of that is that now you have with zero measure um, a very clean mesh that uh, has you know five layers of uh, subdivision level so you can go down to level one and be able to make some really broad rotations and things whereas before we were kind of locked into a fairly um, detailed model as our lowest subdivision level so now I'm just masking off the body inverting it with uh, command I and I'm just gonna use the transpose tool uh, make sure to turn uh, symmetry off and just rotate the shoulders a little bit just to give it a sense of a uh, little bit more sense of character so going it back in for some final passes, uh, adding in wrinkles, and um, um, again, I, I went back and studied more photos, got way more research of the types of um, uh, chimps I wanted to make this guy like, and um, so now I'm just going back in and um, turning symmetry off to add in final touches and wrinkles and um, whatever is necessary to um, bring out the type of uh, skin and surface detail that uh, I want before I do my final rendering, adjusting the intensity um, will allow you to paint lighter or softer. It's it's very similar to Photoshop in this way. Um, also one thing to be aware of is um, uh, you can color pick in ZBrush by holding down the C key. Um, so you can kind of, as you drag over your model and hold down C, you can see the color slowly changing. Um, so that's how you do that. The amount of fur that's going on, uh, that's being covered all over. And um, you can kind of just start messing around with these and see what each one does. I'm noticing there's too many random hairs coming on the bottom, so you can just continue to mask off areas and remove masked areas so that you get the fur exactly where you want it. But again, you can see I'm I'm blended in there pretty uh, uh, and turned down the opacity just so it's hinting and indicating at that and then uh, paint into it after the fact to uh, make it feel a bit more integrated. So going in and painting in elements, maybe a little more stubble and hair around the mouth area. Um, right now I'm going to do, I'm doing the chromatic shift. So I made a copy, flattened it, and now I'm going into the channels to move the red channel. Just a nice little uh, color shift that you see in, in photography, um, which again just helps trick the eye to making it feel like it, you're, we're looking at a photograph of a real thing. Um, I think that's about it. So thanks. See you next time.